Hello and welcome to episode 52 of Enterprise Tech India Unplugged. I hope all of you are paying attention while we are not paying attention to producing more content, but uh, we are encouraged by uh, your views. Uh, hope you are using the your podcast catcher and subscribing to our podcast uh, and watching on YouTube. I know people like to see it on YouTube for f- at least five minutes <laughs> of the conversation and then switch off. So we highly recommend you listen to the audio version of this because uh, that's what we focus on. There is not enough visuals in our video to for you to look at our faces. So if you enjoy listening to podcasts, we highly recommend using your podcatcher like whatever Apple podcast or Google podcast or we are available on all platforms um, and uh, subscribe to our channel. So thank you for indulging us. And uh, today we are going to have a good discussion around uh, a very interesting topic for, for which we have Kumaran. Kumaran is the CTO and chief mentor for Tiny Magic. And uh, the topic which we want to discuss today is the concept of minimum viable product, right? The MVP and how the businesses at the higher level, the, the board of directors and, and, and business in general relate to MVP. Are they really taking it up? And are the, the, the IT teams uh, able to convince them to, to go with that MVP approach? That's, that's something which, which we want to talk about because there seems to be a disconnect between what the IT teams and the software industry wants to bring to the business world, which is this concept of MVP, and and the and the perceived resistance to to this concept. Right. So, Kumaran, in your opinion or your observation of why it does or does not work <clears throat> with the with the business world, what have you seen? And, and what is what is your opinion about whether, whether this is really something they should go after or not? Uh, yeah, so I think it's been quite a challenge, right? Uh, MVP, so we say MVP approach. I think we say, yeah, I want to do MVP. All right. Uh, so you go to a CTO of a company and then you say, you know, let's do uh, is MVP approach is as well important? Yeah, it is important. I think maybe it may be a good idea to just define in your words what MVP is, right? Just just in case people have not heard about it for whatever reason, although that is a very unlikely. I, I, I would come to that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So mm-hmm. I, I would give my definition. But when they say MVP, right, we say do an MVP. This is, I'm telling, this is a popular dialogue, right? Or the conversation that happens. Yes, we got to do MVP kind of a thing. And then it says, okay, so let's launch a project. Okay. Now, I don't know, uh, let's say as a consultant or uh, somebody to the CTO, I kind of say, or the CTO to the board. It says, you know, see the organization is we are an MVP agile kind of a board. But the CTO actually goes and says, you know, I don't know exactly what's going to work. Okay. I only have a rough idea. Okay. Uh, Let me try something as an MVP for one month. And then I would tell. The board reacts by telling you don't know what you're doing. Okay. So the board at that level doesn't have an MVP thinking. Now it says like, oh, You don't even know you're a CTO, but you don't even know what you're doing. You're telling you're going to figure that out. Now I will say the seat, let's say the board at the CTO level itself, right? Now let's say there is a director of engineering comes in and then says, you know, I don't know whether this technology will work or this solution will work. Let me try it for in one month and then I will come back to you. Says no, 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 no. We are running a highly changing business. How can you say you don't know what you will do? Three months is the word where we get killed as a business. Mm-hmm. The CTO tells the same similar kind of a statement to the director of engineering. Director of engineering, 
when they don't have an MVP mindset, the tech lead comes and says, I don't know whether this thing will work or not, but why don't we go put it into production? She says, no, 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 end users will get disappointed. It will be very bad. And for all you know, this is a something like a, a catalog application or something. Nobody is going to die. No, no, we will disappoint the end users. You can't try with the end users or not. Okay. Uh, uh, you got to be very clear on what you are doing. If you don't know, get an expert, learn it and then do it perfectly. Don't try this experiment and all. We can't do this experiment with the end users. Okay. Module lead. Is he willing, he or she willing to try an MVP? And the developer says, you know, I really don't know. Let me learn and do this. Says, no, 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 no. You can't experiment with it. You figure that out. So what is the pattern across, whether it is from the board member to the thing, there is a fundamental mindset problem. Okay. So what MVP they understand is small releases of a big product. Okay. But that is actually waterfall thinking. You just decomposed it into small, have a very big, perfectly formed jigsaw puzzle kind of a thing. I will finish one, one part of a puzzle at a time. People think MVP is that. Okay. A real MVP is I have only a hazy picture of what the final output is. So I will build every piece of the puzzle as I go along. Now I will take one puzzle, do it. I might get that piece correct or I might get the piece wrong. Either way, the MVP is successful. There is nothing like a failed MVP. Okay. MVP is always successful if you have executed it. Now, whether it gives you an expected result or it might give you an unexpected result, positive outcome or expected outcome or unexpected outcome. I won't even call it negative or positive. That is what is an MVP approach. And it's not restricted to software. It is it is towards a thought process. It's towards strategy. It is towards processes. For everything, the same thinking has to happen. So I'm coming up with a new process. One big PowerPoint, get all the employees into one town hall, talk to them, and then say, go implement it. There's no waterfall there, or there's no MVP there. It's assumed that the uh, head of process or head of engineering has got the final solution for it. Think through everything and roll out this change in one single shot across 100,000 employees. Why do, you think, why do you think that that kind of thinking is still prevalent? What is, what is, because MVP, the agile approach has been around at least for 10, 15 years, right? So it's, it's not, it's not new, right? It's, it's, it's been understood, well understood, at least in the software world. Uh, it has been successful in, in number of scenarios, right? Uh, why is it there is so much resistance at the higher levels, right? That, that this, this approach is not something viable. Why is it, wh why, why is there so much resistance in your view? Let's split it into two things. One is MVP with respect to software development. MVP with respect to organizational systems itself, changing organization system, whether it is process, policy, finance management, sales, marketing, any operations that you take, right? Anything change related to that can have an MVP approach. It's not just related to software development, okay? First thing, people don't, I don't think people are clear that I can do an MVP approach, whether it's a sales, marketing, operations, recruitment, I can do an MVP approach there. First, there is a blind site that, Oh, that's only for software development. I am in HR, MVP approach has got nothing to do with me. Okay. I don't think people are very clear. I don't think the HR today says, I know how to do MVP within my department. Finance guys. Okay. I haven't heard any CFO coming and telling we take an MVP approach. Or a HR person telling we do an MVP approach. Okay. MVP is only for software. And this is in startup world. 
I'm not talking about enterprises. Even within the startup world, there is no CFO who comes or the sales guy, which is very important in a startup world, saying we take an MVP approach to that. Oh, that uh, MVP is for the engineering team. What's it got to do with sales? Okay, so that's that challenge is there. I don't think they relate that MVP as a concept. It's only for software. Now, if you come within the tech space, one of the big the resistance is you have to be a know-it-all. Okay, so I have a technology guy. You know exactly how to solve the problem. Otherwise, you are not there. Why am I paying you so much money if you don't know how to solve the problem? That's the expectation of the ecosystem. So somebody might understand what an MVP is, why it is needed. But there is a lot of pressure from the ecosystem to... See, MVP inherently comes from the point that I don't know what will happen in the real world. So let me spend a minimal amount of money. Minimally, it will it can run so that I can know whether it works or not. A lot of people think viable means it's successful, which is a mistake. So viable doesn't mean successful. There is a misconception there. Viable means it can run, but doesn't mean it will take you to the destination. Okay, so there's that there's a fine difference. What is viable? It can operate, you can use it. Doesn't mean it will meet the needs. That's where the problem comes. They always think it has to be successful. So in your view, how do you convince this mind? How do you change this mindset, right? Because obviously this mindset exists and for good or bad reasons, it exists, right? Now, how do you, how do you actually make this transition to, for people to accept that this is, this is a good method to, to find a way forward, right? Because MVP is, is a way to find a way forward, right? It may have expected as unexpected results. And like you said, but how do you change this mindset? What are the steps which uh, organizations or people themselves can take to convince other people that, hey, this is not such a bad thing to try it. And, and this has been proven successful. Right or as a as a successful method to find a way forward. I'm not saying successful as in creating successful outcomes, but successful methodology to to try something and uh, uh, find where it goes. I think they have to uh, depending on the role the person is trying, they need to operate something within that circle of control and within that practice this. So let me just go through the previous example that you see. Like, let's say a team member wants to do an MVP. You would actually say, oh, you don't know whether the technology will work or whether that method will work. Okay, I will give you two weeks, complete it, execute it, and come back with the result. So the module lead has to practice this. Try this two, three times to see. Okay, the code is completed. Whether it will meet the need or not, we will decide. We won't preempt whether that method will solve the problem or not. So the module lead practices at that level. And let's say there are 10 developers. He did not do it with all the 10 developers. Try it with just one. So you get used to that. So if you go at a product manager level, of all the different modules, take a module which is least risky and try it. Now, if you are a director of engineering, you have multiple products, multiple things. In one product, try this for one release. Like Let's say there are four releases in a month. One release can be a, let's call it an MVP release in a true spirit, true MVP release where you are open to failures. Okay. So like that at each level, you got to get comfortable with the failure. Mm -hmm. If you don't get comfortable with the failure, you cannot do an MVP. So I think, yeah, I think that, that fail fast, right? So that is one of the, uh, one of the key tenets of DevOps also 
is fail fast, move forward, find out ways how, how how it will work or not work, right? And that that's that seems to be the the approach to go for go for it. Uh, but the people now this is this is this is I think a chicken and egg story in number of ways, right? So unless you prove it once, you will how will you prove it again, right? So because there will always be a first time for something. Right for some people who have never been into that MVP approach earlier, they they will struggle with it and fall apart and and have to restart. So there has to be some level of persistence in this. Right, it's like any other habit which you form. Is first time you do it, you might fail. Right, and uh, uh, is there is there a prescriptive way of doing this thing or is there a uh, you, everybody have to just muddle through this whole process of doing the mvp is there a prescriptive way of doing it or just try it and see kind of approach there is a prescriptive way uh, i mean like it's something which i have evolved as a part of high hypo high sale mm -hmm. it is uh, we can go to this hypohar.com site and figure that out but in short it is something like one is what stops us from doing an mvp approach is fear of failure okay now there is nothing like uh, so as long as somebody doesn't want to fail you cannot do mvp okay let's be clear on that i don't want to fail Okay, then you cannot do MVP. No, that's okay. You don't want to do MVP, don't do MVP. That's fine. Okay, but I don't know how they will figure out a solution which won't fail at all. <laughs> okay, that's a different topic. Let them, if they can get an answer to that, great. Now, accepting that I want to fail, but I don't want to die. So the question is not that I don't want to fail. The question is, I want to fail with minimum damage. Okay. So, how do you do that is when you're in a particular situation, you list down possibilities. What are all the possible ways to handle a particular problem? Now, within that, you rate it as, do, do you know how to do it? And do you have the resources to do it? Pick something where you have the resource and you know how to do. Execute that as the MVP because that's the best possible least failure option. If you don't have resources, you're going to fail. If you don't know how to go, you're going to fail. So pick a possibility which you have resources within your control and you know how to do. So that means you have reduced the chance of a failure. So that is the way. Today, we take one option and do it. Instead of that, generate multiple possibilities and identify of the possibilities which is least cost and least unknown yep yep and i think that that's a that's a good advice that's a good advice i think uh, this is as an advice to people who are scared of the mvp approach we have discussed uh, quite a few scenarios in fact how how and why it fails or does not work and how to come above that fear of failure right so if like kumaran said if you are afraid to fail then mvp is not for you right so first of all you have to get over your fear of failure or at least if even if you are so scared of failure he has also given you some options of how to find out the least risky way to not fail right so uh, that is also an approach but at some level i think you will have to be uh, willing to take that risk of failure right and the whole concept depends on it actually failing because it's all, it's always possible that your mvp will not succeed or at six, or at least not give you the expected result right and and the chances may range from 90 10 to 50 50 right who, who knows right so there's a uh, uh, depending on your analysis and your expertise in doing something so i hope you got some views of uh, what we think of mvp and uh, how mvp can help you succeed uh, 
and please share your opinion about your experience of doing MVPs. We'll be happy to learn from you. If you disagree with something, we'll be even happier. Uh, and you tell us about, about uh, your experience on LinkedIn. That's, that's the place uh, we would like to listen to your comments. Thank you and see you next time.